to this pinky or red color. And then the major circulation is kind of the tan. What we've been doing is, since we've seen you, we've been doing the, the stuff that's not too much fun for the commissioners, but it's really important, putting in the, the, the mechanical, the electrical, the plumbing, the structural systems, getting the thing to meet code, and all those refinements that are so very important to the functioning of a final building. Same for the second floor, which <laughs> got cut off pretty mightily here. Uh, this, the, the only s second floor function is for police only. We have to go that high in order to uh, preserve the area of the site. It's a very tight site, uh, but it will function very well for us. C kind of a fun time to show the new image. It is our intent to rework the building that we're in now to take the kind of the courtyard that's at the far end, it's currently the mayor's office door is kind of down here, and make that a central entrance place. And of course, this is a public safety building. It holds the police and fire functions and training rooms and all kinds of things like that. And we want to feature that, and we will be doing that with this shown in this facade. Also, if we go to the next one, we're looking for a common entrance point. Uh, really come right into a, a, a central vestibule. If you go to the left, you're in the police. If you're going to the right, you're into a transaction area where we're going to have, uh, we talked about making this, the, the, the functions here safer and easier to, to, to find and uh, uh, generally a more uh, efficient experience to operate. And we'll show, that, show you that from the inside in a minute. But basically, this, this vestibule is capable of being locked off in any one of three different ways. So that we have the ability now and in future, who knows where security is heading, uh, to admit or not admit people to various parts of this building at various times of the day. So we've, we're giving it a lot of thought. Inside, we are making a transaction area that is going to be much more spacious than what you have. You're just too cramped now. People doing business are too close to each other. It causes that human nature reaction of uneasiness. You know, uh, there's, there's a lot of things we want to function and cover. We are having walk-up windows. They will have uh, bullet-resistant glazing in them. Uh, that's the negative side. The positive side, they're farther apart so that it's easier to do the business. You see uh, three of them here. There are two more that are behind this screen. There's an area where somebody can comfortably get off to the side, have a private area, and really fill out forms with, with, without being in anybody's way. And there's an area for display here. So we're, we're really anxious to uh, make this a much more uh, inviting experience for the public, safer experience for the employees, in a much more functional way to, to, to serve a lot of people at the same time. As well as the police, uh, we want the police building to be an inviting building. It is a functional building and obviously serves some pretty tough people. But the upfront portion, the portion uh, that uh, public would deal with often, might be going in here to get an insurance report from an auto accident, might be going here, some fingerprints, might be going here for community safety, might be going down the hall uh, to get some training as a first responder. So we want to have a, um, a lobby that's uh, in the police that, that, that is secure, but really reflects that opportunity and, and makes that a, a very uh, positive experience. Finally, this is a police function, and we, we, we finish on the, the workaday world out back. It's very functional. It's very durable. Most of us in this room won't have much to say about it be, or see about it because it will be fenced. It will be screened in and it will be the day-to-day -day functioning that happens. But that, that kind of gives you a very brief overview of what's been going on in the last couple months. What will happen from now on, we will begin the construction documents so that we can get into the technical stuff, which certainly would be boring to the commissioners. But the, 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 those drawings necessary to actually construct this are being uh, done at this point. Um, the next, um, I'm going to end up getting up because I have the paperwork too. Uh, this next slide is basically um, a continuation of our budget. Just make sure I get everybody. This is a more of a broken down version of the budget. What you're seeing up here is where we started in August 2018, <coughs> the estimated budget, how it worked down through the master planning um, into last, uh, the end of last year, just a year ago, with the 17.735 uh, million, which was approved by the, uh, the board. Um, we had, um, which was our master plan budget. In June, <coughs> schematic design when we came in, um, we were a bit over on our number, uh, but we did um, note under the schematic design and the design, design development that that number includes $821,000 in contingency, an additional 900,000 in 
uh, furniture fixtures, equipment, and technology. Those are the things that haven't been set yet. So, you know, we're within 200,000, but if we look at the new budget listed as today, September 9th, um, our design development of budget, we're actually only about $2,000 off of that number. And this is a breakdown of all of the categories. And if you see the, um, how, it, how it's broken down, we have our concept budget, which is where we started from. Um, the SD budget, which was presented uh, last June, and then our uh, design development budget, which is shown. Uh, you'll see that the uh, police station, the overall cost of the new construction <coughs> has gone down about $200,000. Uh, the renovations for the actual township building <coughs> portion has gone down about 130 or $40,000. Um, our site numbers have gone up, and that's based on what uh, Jay said, that we're continuing to work through all the necessary approvals through uh, the, the county conservation district and MPDS. So we do have a little bit more money in there. Um, our outbuildings have also increased, and that is specifically um, because we did look at bidding the fuel station ahead of time, um, which I think is on the agenda tonight. Uh, we only received <coughs> one uh, viable bid, so we did not have competitive bidding, but what we did do is use that number in our budget now. So that shows the increase um, of basically uh, another $210,000 um, over our estimate. And, and that, that's actually been pulled tonight because- oh, it has been pulled, be okay. Because of the, uh, the bid problem. Yeah, so, I mean, we use that number because we at <coughs> least did have it bid, so we wanted to be <coughs> sure that we have at least that in our budget. Um, that's on the front sheet, so if you look, the total uh, construction costs at the bottom of the sheet, we've really only gone up about $2,000 um, from the, s the schematic design um, budget in June. On the back of the sheet, um, you'll see the breakdown of the, um, of the, of the smaller pieces or soft costs, like I said, we have um, the budget for the police station, the building renovation, the site work, the outbuildings, uh, the furniture, fixtures, and equipment is the $900,000. We still have soft costs um, in there for about 2.1 million and the 821,000, which is the project contingency at this point. Um, we've also um, increased the amount of ad alternates and have shown some deduct alternates that we can use at bid time to, uh, to gain or subtract money. Uh, like like um, this year has been a very um, high bidding year across, <laughs> across the board for all projects. Um, so we wanted to um, pull out some specific alternates and deducts, uh, add alternates and deducts that can help us balance the budget in case <coughs> um, the bidding climate does continue to be high. Uh, we're looking to go out to bid um, at the end of this year, um, take bids uh, late uh, January or early February. Um, so we should be the first big project in the Valley in the queue, which hopefully means we'll get better pricing um, from the get-go. Um, so we hope we don't have to really exclude any anything from the building at this point. Um, and like I said, we are within budget, and at this point, we are still on schedule. This is the continuing schedule. This is this year's schedule um, through uh, construction completion. Um, tonight, the 9-9 uh, date is the project update. Um, we have... We did bid the uh, abatement portion of this existing building to go ahead of time so we can help um, the township uh, with the records, you know, trying to figure out where things are going as we're moving pieces around during the renovation. Um, at this <coughs> point, if, um, if we do get approval of that contract tonight, um, they can begin downstairs in the, in the basement on the 23rd. They have put in, the abatement company has put in their 10-day notice uh, as required uh, to start the work. Um, we're hoping that the final uh, construction documents Jay spoke about would be complete November 27th. Um, we would come back in December, your first meeting, uh, full meeting in December to give you another update to let you know that we're ready to go out to bid. 
Um, hopefully, we will then uh, do all the mandatory <coughs> bid meetings and get all um, get all the the projects onto the street for bidding and come back um, in February to get approval of those bids to start the uh, phase one construction portion, which is the, the addition, the police station addition um, to this building. So we'd love to have any questions. I can go back to pictures. Just, just one general question. Uh, the exterior facade. The yes. materials is that uh, the proposed materials is going to be pretty maintenance fee or yeah. maintenance free for a couple dec several decades I hope I mean we it's are we are shooting for as maintenance free as we can get it metals masonry uh, things that do not to be need to be maintained off the sides need periodic caulking about every ten years you should redo the sealants we're going to have that but there should be no air, no 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 surfaces that need to be painted, nothing that needs to be uh, maintained beyond normal. Including the <coughs> metal? The metal The metal is, is warrantied for 25 years. It's a kind air finish. It shouldn't require any issues of, of uh, maintenance at all. Anybody else with any other questions? Mayor? Phasing of the uh, outbuildings for Met public works, week. is that going to be? We are going to be having a meeting tomorrow. We're very concurrent, right? We're <laughs> exactly. The team is together tomorrow uh, talking about phasing, and then we'll bring that back to the township and talk to staff about how that would work. But obviously, we have to get the fuel station now, which we wanted to do this fall. we got to get it out of the way, and we really want to get the public works building that's attached to this one removed and out of the way. So very early on, those two things will happen, probably concurrently. They're, they're over on the, the side. We can also uh, very early on do uh, site work. The big picture, it is our intent to build the police about 80%, 90%, move the staff from this building, leave the police over where they are now, move the staff from this building temporarily into the police. It really saves a lot of money. We'll have some float space. Let them operate out of that for about four months, six months maximum, four to six, while we renovate the existing building. They can then come back in, and then we can complete the police for complete functions, for <coughs> police functions, and off we go. That's, that's a very, very big picture. We will be reporting back to staff, and they can share that with you, working with staff the, the, the micro pieces of that to get it to work, but that's the big picture. And we want to start in March. In this climate, that's when you want to start. It doesn't do you much good to start ahead of that around here. It's too muddy, it's too cold, it's too icy. Get started in March, get under roof by fall. We'll be in good shape. Any other comments for the board? Mayor? Pardon? Mayor? Do you have any questions? Oh. Back? Thank you very much. We've been in constant contact with them. We meet regularly, so we're aware of what's going on here. We just want to make sure the board has an opportunity to see where we are at this point. And I want to thank uh, Jay and Kim, not just for being here, but doing a, an exceptionally professional job in helping us through this project. They've been doing a great job Can for us. Hold on a second. I, I apologize. I forgot that. Anybody here from the public that wishes to comment on any of this? We're not going anywhere. No, th this will go on for months and months, but if anybody from the, you're, you're certainly more welcome to com comment along. Any questions? Anything? Okay. All right, moving on. Public hearing and voting on ordinances. <coughs> I think we're okay to go. Mm -hmm. Bill number 46-2019. Title, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the removal of hazardous materials, including decontamination for the Whitehall Township Municipal Building in accordance with sections 3.20 and the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. 
Do I have a second? I'll second. Comments from the board? I just have one question. I know I brought it up last week. With this starting the 23rd, that's what this, this is in reference to? The, where can the EOC equipment and stuff be stored? That we, we need a power source because we have battery banks and everything like that that we can access. We, we need to sit down with you to make sure we get well, that I mean, appropriately. Well, Chris, Chris is back there too. I know. Um, if we can't solve that right now, tomorrow we'll try to get together or later tonight and get some more information so we know what you guys actually need because we haven't talked that through yet. Chris, yeah. do you want to say anything about it? No. No. <laughs> Not in public. Okay. All right. Any other comments for the public? Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Fryman? Yes. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. And President uh, Ginder? Yes. As it, bill passes five ayes, zero nays. Bill number 48-2019, title and ordinance authorizing acceptance of a proposal for the collection and disposal of municipal solid waste and recyclables. Contract number 2019-32, in accordance with section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Comments from the board? One just general comment. The yard waste pickup is going to remain the same. Yard waste is in yeah. the base bid, so yes. Yeah, yard waste is still the nine months. And we have flexibility on the seasons. The leaves are on later. Well, yeah, the, the leaves, still. yeah, and, and the grass, the same thing. Usually that's pretty much done, but, you know, they've been very flexible to work with, and as you see there, the apparent low, successful low bidder in this contract as well. The two things that appear that you may wish to change, um, there was a credit that was given if we would remove the collection of curbside grass and there was a household hazardous e-waste option. Um, it was our recommendation that we do not accept the credit and allow the grass to still be collected curbside since that is a recyclable item and we can claim that on on our on our 904 forms and the household hazardous waste is about a million dollars over the five years which would add twenty one dollars for everybody's bill our recycling coordinator figured that that was very high of a price uh, to pay for something that we could probably try and 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 improve upon uh, on a on a collection like one of those collection events like we've had in the past with household hazardous waste. We could more or less do us like a spring fall. Yeah, I mean, she thought there was more wisdom in that since <coughs> DEP does not provide any funding for that unless it's on a county-wide level, mm -hmm. and right now Lehigh County is kind of back themselves away from the household hazardous waste um, disposal. So we wouldn't get an, a separate receptacle for these hazardous waste? No. No. So how would that work? If How it would work if you would do it, it would be placed on your front porch, um, off of the street, somewhere on your property. The it would be a, a special collection that would be done on they the resident would have to call in for that uh, to set up the collection and they would go on to your property collect the hazardous wastes and you know take they, it to whatever and they want a million dollars nine hundred eighty thousand it's a hundred ninety thousand some dollars every year. 
Yeah, it's very expensive. Well, the problem which is, is why good. Wilson Borough is the only one doing it in the Lehigh Valley right now. And it's not so much the labor to come and collect it, it's the cost of getting rid of it. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what the cost is, it's, it's not like... And then the flip thing to this is, if we don't have that, that's when we see the outlying streets littered with these things. Because you, you can still go up some of these streets and see TVs and whatnot. And, and how the heck they, where they throw it is just bizarre. I mean, it seems like they're willing to get killed by a car coming around a corner too quick for where you see this stuff flowing. And I wouldn't necessarily say that it would be Whitehall residents as much as oh, no, no, outside. No. It's, it's anybody, and that's yeah. not going to stop regardless of whether or not we have an e-waste program or not. The other big thing is that recycling costs have almost doubled. So not only won't the township be getting paid for the recyclables as we are now, but our disposal and collection costs will go up by about half a million dollars, which will undoubtedly increase our, our garbage bills in the future. So if we have two events a year, how much would that cost us? Or wasn't that looked at yet? Well, I mean, typically the, the, the household hazardous waste things are less than $10,000 of what we spend for our paper shredding, our VIN etching, and our um, the recyclables and e-waste. So, I mean, that's a lot more affordable to have quarterly ones like that than, uh, than to have something that would be a... Uh, a curbside collection. Well, yeah, and, well, and I'm just trying to envision if we just have it here two times a year because everybody on the board, I think, has been through the recycling weight as you're going around the building and mm -hmm. whatnot. And, you know, it seems like it would have, to me, would probably be better if it was done it, it's going to have to be done elsewhere, somewhere on a, on, on a more wider point of access, especially given the fact that oh, yeah, here, our yeah. building is going to yeah, be yeah, under yeah, construction yeah. and there will be no place to go with that. So. Hmm. I didn't think of that. Well, we, we have our recycling station. Center, yeah, that's what I was wondering. We, we have that, and between that, and maybe we can set something up in the Cameron tract when that time comes, you know, or, or over at the golf, you know, just set up a one day, whatever we need to get it done, and mm -hmm. have to advertise that it's not. But that I think that can be readily handled. I think down the road, too, we probably could um, explore the feasibility of uh, our recycling center on Range Road storing the equipment, or the electronics in the storage box. Yeah, electronics are a lot different than the hazardous waste mm -hmm. stuff because all you need is for one spill there and all of a sudden you're a hazardous yeah. waste site, you know. But we don't collect hazardous waste. Well, no. we during the recycling events. No. It's, it's TVs it's and things like that. TVs. I think that's the main thing, people wanting to get rid of TVs. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, like places that are commercialized, it's like thirty-five dollars to get rid of a mm -hmm. TV. Will grass and yard waste still be picked up on alternate days? So well, the, all vegetative waste will be collected the day after. Uh, the day after the, the normal like if garbage. If you have a Monday pickup. collection of recyclables and and garbage, your vegetative waste days would be the next day, that Tuesday because that was the major problems that we've been having with collections being missed is confusion by on the part of some of the residents and confusion on the part of the throwers who see half a can of grass mixed with half a can of yard waste and don't, neither one takes it because they think it's one or the other. So this ends all the confusion. But you'd have, you'd have basically double the amount of containers out there that, that we have on a given grass or yard waste day. Yes, but you're really only going to have on, on your regular collection day will be the fully automated collection of recyclables and, and yeah. garbage plus whatever bulk items. Yeah, it's a, couple of it's a lot cleaner for, tho for those days collections and 
it's easier to schedule your workers um, for the guys that are going to be throwing for the rear load for the for the grass leaves and uh, yard waste. Just a few comments I got from residents on that. The, the major comment was uh, that they're going to have to buy twice as many garbage cans to get rid of that lawn waste and and uh, yard waste yard waste because they've been using. Let's say they have two containers of grass. They put that out one day, pull them back, and then they'll put their yard waste mm -hmm. in the same two containers the next day. But right. now they're going to have to go out and buy f two more containers, and they'll have four to speak setting out at the curb. It, it was just some comments that, that I had gotten from, from the residents on that. We talked about that. Um, the, the savings... Um, inherent in doing it on one day were worth noting. Yeah. Worth I noting. mean, our garbage, the, gar the, <coughs> the garbage component here was up maybe just a few thousand dollars compared to this year. It didn't go up much at all because of the fact that we were going to, we were going to standardize the collection of the, plus we have the automated collection. Mm -hmm. So that those things were working in our favor. Well, the, the money you save on, on the garbage pickup, you know, you hopefully you can afford to buy a few extra cans. So well, <laughs> it's, with the recycling, the garbage cost, I mean, the, the, the contract costs are going up substantially. And we knew this was coming. Yeah, I mean, this you know, no until we find a way to get rid of our, our recyclables and, and have a market for what we have out there now, I mean, you see what the oceans are getting filled with and, and the landfills and stuff, and the processing <laughs> facilities are trying to become more, tech, more technologically advanced, but it's a huge investment of time and resources and money for them. It's a market problem, right? Yeah, mm. it is. It's in the paper. It's no big surprise. It's so uh, essentially, the, the contract, the total contract would amount to uh, if we accepted just the Christmas trees and the and the uh, leave collection and opt out of the credit for the uh, grass collection not being done and the elimination of the household hazardous waste option, it would be twelve million fourteen thousand five hundred thirteen dollars for the five year contract. And there also are in this contract three one year options which upon mutual agreement, we can extend the contract for three additional one-year terms. So that's, that's a benefit to us and, and the hauler. To be quite truthful, I think this is better than what I expected. I expected worse. I expected a lot worse, especially I on did. the recycling end of things. Mm -hmm. From everything I've read, I've expected much worse. Christmas trees and leaves actually went down. So the cost, so. Jack was smiling when he got the bid. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was panicking when I read the first bid, but the second bid <laughs> got me down. So, well, it just shows a lot of work, and, and thank you, Jack, and thank you. And you're from Waste Management. I am from Waste Management. I wouldn't mind speaking for a moment. Please go right ahead. I know you have your meeting running along, and I apologize. Um, I think Jack did a great job summarizing I think Jack did a great job summarizing everything, um, and there's a lot that's going on in the recycling markets that are causing some changes. There's a lot of things going on in the labor market. Uh, it's just very difficult getting workers to come and do what we do every single day. Warehouses are being built all over the place, and guys can get paid <coughs> as much or more to work insides uh, out instead of out on routes. Um, I did want to talk a little bit on the Household Hazardous Waste Program. I understand a short of a million dollars is a big number to look at. Um, but one of you referenced disposal of a uh, uh, television being $35 just to get rid of one television. That, that program of short of $200,000 a year for the collections at your, at your door uh, averages out to $2 a month for the five years for each residential unit, 
$24 a year. But when you extend that across 12 months and nearly 8,200 residential units, that's where you're looking at a, a larger number with a one bill coming to, to the municipality. But when you, when you break it down a little bit more on the individual basis, it's $2 a month, $24 a year, where a resident could call and schedule collection of an electronic or any other household hazardous waste material at their home and we would come right to their their driveway or their front porch and pick it up so I just wanted to touch a little bit more on that because I, I see everybody's eyes open real big on a million dollar additional number but it's it's really when you look at an individual homeowner as to how much more it it it, it, it winds up costing uh, on an individual basis it's it's really not not that significant uh, that way. And just the way the program works, um, residents would call our, not call here to schedule it, they would call our offices. We then schedule a date. We send a packet out to the homeowner with a giant bag that they, and labels, with they label whatever it is that they're putting into the, uh, into the bag, whether it's paints or pesticides or whatever. Uh, TVs and electronics are set outside the bag, and usually within a two-week period after a call is made, we have a date scheduled, and our trucks will come out, pick it up in a box truck, separate it, and about 80% of what we collect is, is actually recycled. And you're right, Jack, Wilsonboro is the only one in this area. Until recently, uh, Lower McCungee Township, back in June, agreed to, to this program in their township and uh, and that's going to be rolling out shortly where their residents will be a part of the the what we call at your door household hazardous waste program so I just wanted to throw that additional information at you um, if you have any questions for me on that I'm here to answer if you have any questions on the other contract side of it I'll be available for that as well Thank does, it, does still include that you have a sofa yeah, that, that's in your base call. That's well, no, no, and yeah. I, again, yeah. you, you learn to ask everything here. No, I know. <laughs> yeah. so. No, though the the two bulk items per collection day is still in, as it was. Just just on an open question, how many TVs could you put out a year? Uh, you could. You have an unlimited. I mean, you basically have an unlimited number of times that you could call, but we wouldn't necessarily come out, but. Uh, 52 times a year, roughly, if you called every single time. So it could be up to weekly that we could have a truck out in the township picking up. Because basically with that type of system, I mean, the whole relation could be bringing TVs I was just to one say, house. I and six sisters and a brother. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're, I mean, uh, when, that, when it comes to our call center, they take the, the name and the address of the person, and you could be taking your brother-in-laws from another town and you could be doing that. You're, you're exactly right. But Because um, when, it, when you look at $24 a year versus what is it, 35 or 50 to get rid of a TV. And then you have to haul too. You have, you have to haul around to get rid of it. That's why I just wanted to give a little clarity on that. I mean, I know that's a big but, number when you look at the million. But, uh, but on the other token, we don't want houses sitting with 10 TVs outside because the whole relation dropped their TVs off at Easter. Well, <laughs> there's a limit to that. Like, if you schedule it and I'm coming out next week to get it, you're not going. I'm not going to pick up ten in front of your home. I'll pick up the one at your home, but you could reschedule for another collection at another date. But I'm not going to come and pick up ten, ten or fifteen at, at one address. That, that, I do that, have a limit on you know, that. You know how fast things can be taken advantage of, and that, that's my question with this. And the, and there's a limit per scheduled time. But uh, basically, uh, you know, throughout the course of the year, you could call numerous times to schedule it. Well, and, you know, it does break down probably to somewhere between 20 and $25 on the additional. But bear, one of the things we had to bear in mind was that the rates are probably going to go up just basically on what the contract is now because of what's happened in the recycling industry mm -hmm. that we can't hold that $300 a year. So how much, how much more do you want to put back on the homeowner yeah. for 
and especially the seniors, you know, they're the ones, I mean, they're getting a discount, but you know, their use of the, of, of the garbage and recycling system is a lot less. And mm -hmm. Without question. No, I just wanted to, to bring that so part of it up. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. A judgment call you got to make. Yep. Anybody from the public wish to comment? Any other comments from the board? Mayor. We do, we do have the flexibility at uh, a future date if we fill that. It makes sense to incorporate uh, electronics pickup. We can do that within the five-year contract. Is that, that, is that would, something? No, we no. would have to go out. And go out and bid. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. So it's either you get it now or you don't get it. No. I mean, you could bid it any year. You could bid yeah. it, but, it, but at that price right now, it's once and done. You make your decision now. Let, let's uh, ask a question here. Should the board decide after further evaluation? And I, I think we opened these bids on Wednesday, Jack? Thursday. Thursday? Yeah. Um, and we didn't have a whole bunch of time. Um, Actually, the, the, the other bidder was lower on the e-waste than household hazardous waste. But yeah, I don't think they're right. going to give us that they, uh, price you know, <laughs> if we're not giving them the business. They were but like 167,000, yeah, thousand. over the five years. Yeah. I mean, it's still a big number. I mean, they were less by about 30,000 a year than we were roughly. Mm -hmm. 30, Something 40. like that. Yeah. So I guess the question is, should the board decide that they want to revisit this? Can this be addended? Uh, if they want to look at this again in October and make a different decision. Add that one piece on. Is that something Saying, that's possible? Uh, no. I would think you'd have to award the con the, the contract. Is, I, I think we have like 60 days under the specs to award the contract. So we could table it, it sounds like. If, if you wanted to award just the, are you saying asking, could you award the initial offer and then would you be able to come back and ask us if we would want to go with what we had bid for the household hazardous waste and electronics at your at another time? Uh, I don't know yeah, how I that works. How that will I don't know how it works either. That's why I was asking. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I think you have you have your bids and you have your options. You either yeah. pick and choose, you know, which ones you want, but I, you know, this is the fish or cut we're, bait. We're bump, bumping up against the budget constraints yeah, I here. Mean, uh, we're going to, yeah. We're in September. Next month is two days before the budget's due. Right. And I'm not going to be able to put any kind of numbers <laughs> together if we wait another month. That's why it was it was done this yeah. way. So Jack, that I'm, I, I apologize. I didn't no, want to muddy the no, words you're not what your thing was. I just wanted to clarify the mm -hmm. program a little bit more. So sure, I, I apologize. If no, it was, nothing to apologize for. Okay. All right. Okay. Comments from the board? What are the board's wishes? As, I wish as Jack we go ahead and vote on this, what we have. The way Jack presented yeah, it. Yeah, be because the other bidder, since he was, or they were going to go ahead and get the whole contract, they might say, well, we're not going to go for that. Now it costs more. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I think, yeah. what you meant when you were looking at this, correct? Right. I mean, and... Just in looking at it, I think we have options moving forward with by having collection days. Um, our recycling coordinator was, was is has already started to make discussions with uh, some of the people at the county level to try and see that if, if if we could get support for this from the county, um, you know that if we have to go this alone, that at least they could support us through mm -hmm. this process and try and secure some funding for it. Oh, and they're, they're also not going to be collecting garbage on Chides Road before 5.30 in the morning, correct? <laughs> um, hey, no, I, I, let mean, Kit, is, I let Kit know about that. <laughs> this, is, this is getting a little old. I mean, it doesn't affect me because I'm up, but I'm thinking of all the other people with their kids and whatnot. There's, there's a reason it was at 6. That's, that's all. So, Jack, Kit's aware of that? Kit is, Kit is yeah, Kit is I talked to him. Supervisor. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm not always privy to all of that detail. Jason, and and, and, and I, I, I'm aware of that. But the deal is, I understand there's places where this has to go through just because of the, the traffic. That, mm -hmm. That's fine. It's just that there's no reason, particularly on some of these other roads, to be like, oh, you know, we're out here. We got to do this. And again, I'm. Yeah. Got yeah I'm working with Kit on that. <laughs> Any other comments? Man. Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fryman? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Clary? Aye. And President Ginn? Yes. Bill passes five ayes, zero nays. Public hearing and voting on resolution. Thank you very much. Nope, uh, thank you. Keep working with you, and uh, I'll, we'll call contract. It, it, that includes the whole thing. Yep. All Got right. your stuff today. All right. So. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. You're here for the resolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it worked. What are we like, going now? Like, Public <laughs> hearing and voting on resolutions. Oh. Resolution number 3080. A resolution conditionally improving the major subdivision and land development plan of municipal campus upgrades. For Whitehall Township, located at 3219 MacArthur Road, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, index number 1940-19. <coughs> Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Comments from the board? Comments from the public? Would you wish to state anything? No, he sure. just is saying like all this time and nobody asked him. Yeah, I mean. How do you like this word? <laughs> Mr. Secretary, pull the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Clary, aye. Mr. Fry uh, Commissioner Fryman, yes. Commissioner, uh, what's your name? Uh, Warren, aye. <laughs> and President uh, Ginder, yes. Resolution passes five ayes, zero nays. Thank you. Thank you for the um, brief presentation. <laughs> resolution. Ah, <laughs> worth every penny. <laughs> Both dressed up and no place to go. Hey, Tom, just go with what's your name. Okay. No answer. Okay. Resolution number 3081. A resolution conditionally approving the minor subdivision plan of Michael Hobel. Located at 5109 Copley Road, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania. Index number 1938-19. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Do I'll I have a second? I'll second it. Comments from the board? There being none, comments from the public? Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Commissioner Fryman. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. Commissioner uh, Clary. Aye. President Ginder. Yes. Resolution passes five ayes, zero nays. Under other, a motion to approve the release of escrow for completed and withdrawn projects per Deputy Mayor Myers, memo dated August 20th, 2019. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Comments from the board? Comments from the public? Mr. Secretary, please poll the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Ryman? <coughs> yes. President Ginder? Yes. Motion passes, five ayes, zero nays. Motion to approve the appointment of Christian Malone to the Whitehall Township Fire Police. Do I have a motion? Make a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Comments from the board? Did we say we were going to change the way we did this because of the oversight? To, to, to my knowledge, basically, we said the board basically said they don't need to see the applications. Okay. That the chief was handling them and we didn't need to see them. Chief? Mm -hmm. So basically what we do is that prior to you guys
guys getting the LDA and asking for your approval. Uh, we actually bring them in for an interview. We do a background check, rental, and uh, uh, the welfare picture. <coughs> Is there somebody from the fire police involved in that? Like, would there would they be in the future sure. involved? That comes in with us when we do the interviews as well, okay. uh, so that he can get questions asked and make sure. That's all we do. That's the reason that Rex is down with us. Any other time, it's just he doesn't choose himself. Rex is the the head of the, the fire, fire, police. fire. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Chief. Any other questions for the public? Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner Fryman? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Barry? <coughs> aye. Mr. Sloniker? Aye. President Ginder? Yes. Motion passes, five ayes, zero nays. Reports of public officials. Uh, Commissioner Warren, you want to start? Okay, I'll go real quick. Um, Frank, did yes, we sir. reach out to First Commonwealth on the sidewalk? I have a name. I have, have a name. I've not reached out, but I have a right. name, so that's we next. Keep put that up on the hot list because that place is oh, almost, it's very looks like it's ready to open tomorrow. Uh, the other one, are we moving along on the Mechanicsville Road sidewalk? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right. Yes. Hopefully, we have a better update next month. Well, hopefully, I'll, I'll have even more news next month. But. Great. Um, Lehigh Valley Planning Commission did have their review of transportation projects after being cut millions, hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. And I heard two of our projects might have made the short list. Do you know if that's? Nobody's notified me of that. All right. I would like that. But, t uh, <coughs> but uh, Frank and, and Peter did a great job of representing us for the 10, million, uh, 10 minutes that we had right. to <laughs> present our nine projects. Spoke fast. Maybe that was just hearsay based on the, the comments made at the meeting. But it, when that comes through, I know we have a voice in the public comment that right. we can push it along if there's something we think needs to be pushed along. Thank you. That's right. I Commissioner Shaw? No. Commissioner Schlottinger? Uh, I don't want to put anybody who works in development on the hot seat here, but are you reading that too much there? Oh, okay. Is there any way that uh, Melissa or whomever can send out some letters to some people that have these giant things they put out for advertising every day uh, for their business. I mean, these certainly aren't approved, but uh, they're out there, and it's the traditional people that put up signs. And again, it, they don't fit in my car. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, the ones that <coughs> have a real large poll and, you know. And again, it, it's just to make the community not look like uh, oh. the president would put it a different way, but uh, yeah. I, I only say a whole. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and again, uh, it, I, I'm not going to go out and, you know, tell you. I'll tell you in private, but. Uh, Maybe I, a bigger car. What? Maybe a bigger car. I, I didn't, I don't take out the Suburban because I don't want to be burning that much gas. <laughs> so. Yeah, we can. And, and again, just a letter and, you know, to some of these places, I've told them, you guys told them, and not about the big ones, but they'll put out whatever they want at any time they want. When you say no, 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 uh, these are these would they're right in the grass areas, oh. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. That's all. Commissioner Ann. Just one quick thing that uh, September is National Preparedness Month. It's a month set aside that families and communities have a mindful idea of if there's emergency to be prepared for them, uh, water, food. Um, emergency contact information, backup batteries, that sort of thing. So 
just asking the public to be more vigilant on being so prepared for an emergency. Yeah, that would make a great article in the paper, I think. Sorry? I said I think that would make a great article in next week's paper. If only we knew somebody who could uh, highlight that. He's sitting in the back of the room. He's our emergency management coordinator. <laughs> Jeff. Could I, one, one more Absolutely. Question. Are you done, Ann? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> MacArthur Road, the holiday banner or the season's greeting banner that used to cross MacArthur Road is, <clears throat> I know there was a height requirement. One of the poles is, meets the height requirement. The other one is shorter. I know MacArthur Road generates a ton of revenue, and I thought maybe if we there's interest with the chamber or the business along MacArthur Road that we could look at returning something there. Um, it seemed like that was the hallmark of the shopping district and it's wasn't we couldn't put it up last year. So we we put it up in the triangle at Everhart Road. Um, but I'm not aware that anything with the poles has changed well, at this yeah, the, point. The, well the one pole yeah, the height requirement has increased. So right. the poles have got to be extended or newer poles have to be put in mm -hmm. and that has to be engineered and then you have to get an HOP every year. Uh, to put every year, every year has yeah. to be renewed. Because right. the one pole is the eyelets four or five feet down from the top of the pole, mm -hmm. so yeah. that could be raised. Right. But the other pole is it's at the top. Well, right. the one pole would have to be replaced. We, right. You know, according to Matt, we can't raise the height of that pole no. structurally. Right. right. To, Obviously. Yeah. Um, that's I think okay. it was like fifteen thousand. It was yeah. a lot. It was yeah. a lot of money, and yeah. we didn't have it in right. liquid fuel. Too spend with top of the road this year. So we could look at it for the budget. All right. That's it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I, one brief cop. Mayor Mike, are you going to talk about John Weehand and his organization, what they did Friday night? I, I would welcome you doing would that. Would you? Then here. I have nothing else. If you would please uh, do that. Okay. Um, an ex-commission <laughs> member and president of the board, um, John Weehand, who has been running a uh, Wreaths Across America program uh, throughout Whitehall and, and the Lehigh Valley. Uh, last Friday brought to the uh, start of the football game um, a plan that he had proposed to the school district some months ago and they welcomed with open arms um, an opportunity to have a POW MIA flag at the uh, at the school site. Uh, Captain Barnes, a graduate of Whitehall High School, and a uh, U.S. veteran flying in Vietnam was brought down. His plane had not been discovered. Uh, I believe it was 1967 that he went down. And I think it was 2012 that his remains were transported back to the United States for burial at Arlington. Um, having read of this recently, John went to the school, got authorization to put together a program to honor Captain Barnes and all POW MIA survivors and those um, who had been injured, brought back uh, dead, uh, brought back and it was a wonderful event uh, for those of you who might have been there um, the there were a, a lot of tears in the stands and a lot of tears on the field um, the uh, our primarily our veterans associations uh, brought people to march in a uh, an honor uh, line out onto the field. Um, the, uh, the flag was raised and interestingly the football teams, both football teams, went down the line shaking hands and thanking everyone who was there with the flag who was honoring Captain Barnes. Um, and uh, it happens that uh, our vice chair here was there um, and um, many other people honoring the, our, our, our dead. And uh, I, I can't say enough about what you, you did, Phil, 
and everybody who was there to honor the name of, of uh, Captain Barnes. Um, if you have something else you want to throw in there. Um, John Wien and his, his organi organization uh, leads across them. I think they did a wonderful job. Yeah. And, well, John's just one of those guys. He, he uh, goes to the school every year, talks to uh, classes of kids about what it was like to be in Vietnam, and uh, he, he does everything he can to help move the, forward, uh, the, uh, the community forward in understanding what it was that happened during that period. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to say good things about John. He's a great guy, and he's done a lot for this community, not only a, a member and, and a chair of this board at one point, also on the Planning Commission, and ultimately he was the chair of our uh, Whitehall Copley uh, School Board. So he's done an awful lot of good, and he just uh, can't. And the Historical Society, too. And the Historical Society, yeah. Yep. He was with the first, uh, first, first historical society board that uh, that the board ultimately uh, authorized after we saved that uh, grist mill. So, anyway, thank you for letting me do that. And uh, if you're ready for me, yep, uh, right I'll ahead. be brief. Uh, some of the highlights: um, things are still moving forward with the acquisition of the dairy. Uh, spoke within the past month to the the uh, prospective owners and their representatives, and they're still on board for getting this done. I uh, met with uh, uh, legislative uh, uh, Jeannie McNeil, uh, state legislator, and her staff, along with Mike Rebert and uh, Chris Cuffro from PennDOT. Uh, we talked with members of the Fullerton Legion about how uh, things were going to move forward with the uh, potential abandon, well, I think likely abandonment of Wood Street and relocation of that along the uh, north side of the, the uh, Legion property, the Fullerton Legion property. Um, Mike Rebert is the uh, director of District 5. Uh, Chris is his uh, kind of right-hand man. and. The uh, Legion is very pleased to hear what they did, meeting with, uh, with PennDOT. And PennDOT, once again, has been very supportive of, of what they're doing here. Um, during the meeting, once again, uh, Mike noted that at this point, the uh, Fifth Street Bridge is still on board to get uh, constructed during the widening, uh, which we're anticipating to begin sometime about three years out. Uh, you may be aware that uh, in uh, July, but primarily not distributed back to the public uh, until into August, we were notified that PennDOT was going to lose $380,000 in contributions for projects in our region in Lehigh and Northampton County. Uh, I think it was the uh, second largest percentage cut of any region in, in the state. And uh, it, it's going to be painful. Um, projects that were scheduled two years out or four years out are not now being pushed back to seven and 10 years. And they are working, and I'm, I mean PennDOT is working as hard as they can to make sure that they can get the job done for us. And they're doing the best they can with their hands tied a bit. So I want to thank them for, for what they're doing for us and the help that they're giving us. I uh, also want to note that when the Lehigh Valley, our future Lehigh Valley report was released, three projects were highlighted as potentially transforming the character of the region, but most significantly of, of uh, Whitehall Township. And they featured MacArthur Road as, uh, and, and because it is such an important area in, uh, in the Lehigh Valley, MacArthur Road needs to be assisted in guaranteeing that we have a healthy retail community here. So they highlighted MacArthur Road, looking at what admittedly was, uh, um, I guess, wishful thinking about what we can do there. 
but uh, the point is they're, they're working with us trying to find ways to help us. They also looked at a, a transformation of the Whitehall Mall and what could be imagined there along with the dairy. So we're getting a lot of attention, people understanding and putting their thought processes and planning to helping MacArthur Road and Whitehall Township generally succeed. So I'm really happy to find where we are with, uh, with the planning process and with what PennDOT's doing to help us move forward. That's it. The Treasurer's Report. Okay, recently our office has been asked by a lot of people if there are any discount points for tax. The only discounts available are through the Homestead Act. If you have not applied for that, you should. That comes as a result of money that comes from the casinos. Everyone gets the same amount in each district. And the only exonerations allowed on school taxes are to our 100% disabled veterans as approved by the Veterans Administration. My advice to people complaining about school taxes is to seek out your state representative and senator and ask them to work very hard on a new plan for funding school districts other than through taxpayer dollars, homeowners. So th that's my advice at this point. We've had a lot of phone calls. Uh, pass the word on to anyone who asks you. That's it. Motion for adjournment. Uh, there are cookies before the motion to adjourn. There are cookies available in the caucus room as long as you don't stay forever. Do you have a motion for adjournment? I'll move. Do you have a second? Can we get a second on that? Sure. Me and adjourn. I thought you were the first, Ann. No. The adjourn. I'll probably be the first to get though. Go what? Uh, uh, it was eliminating the option for the household hazardous anyways and elimination of the credit. Oh, yeah. How you doing, buddy? Hey, buddy. Uh, you didn't come up to the they couldn't talk to us. How could I be so dumb as to forget to read this? And look at it sitting back, and I just thought about it. Oh, it's not a big deal. I know, but. I mean, as I said,